Thank you for joining us for the Thought and Action Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Flegel, and this is where we talk about what's going on in the world of wealth and what you can do about it. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. I'm joined by Fred Gratz, Director of the East Coast for U.S. Energy Development Corporation. Now, we are talking about oil and gas as an investment, but I'm not going to talk about the investment future for those industries. If you're interested in that, give me a call. What we are going to talk about and the thought for today is whether or not you want to take your taxable traditional IRA account and convert it into a completely tax-free Roth IRA account and potentially do so in a tax advantage or tax-free way. And the action is deciding whether or not that investment decision is appropriate for you. All right, Fred, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I want to give you a quick moment just to introduce yourself for the viewers or listeners that may not know you yet. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. And again, Fred Gratz here with U.S. Energy Development. I am the director of the East Coast, basically, for U.S. Energy. And I do everything from tax planning, working with advisors and CPAs out there on helping very create very unique and different tax planning maneuvers for their clients. Super. So uh, thanks again for taking the time to be on. Uh, I want to dive right in and talk about why someone would want to convert you know, their traditional IRA uh, in retirement into a Roth IRA. What's, what's the benefit to doing that? Well, the single biggest, there's a few, but the single biggest one is just having access to all of those funds with all of that growth of years and years of compounding and accumulation, 100% tax-free, right? That's the single biggest uh, reason you would typically be motivated to convert to a Roth is all of those tax-free benefits when you go to access those dollars. Unlike a, a traditional IRA, right, that as we all know, grows and has a, some tax incentives on the front end, but all your future growth comes to you at your ordinary income rates when you go to access it later on. Right. Yeah, I always call it the golden nugget of accounts, you know, so you're helping people create that nugget, which is great. Is there an age limit to doing this conversion? No, not at all. Any age can do this. So you can do this, you know, when if you're, you just had an IRA that opened up last year to, you know, whatever, 80 years old. There's really, is there, is there an ideal time to do this strategy? Yeah, really, the sooner the better is the short answer. Because again, the, it's really all about all of that future growth. So the more time you have in front of you, the more attractive that that strategy is. Not to say that you can't do this later in life. We definitely work with a lot that do, but typically those that have the most to gain by having more future dollars tax-free benefit the most. Right. So, so take me through, this is open to anybody, right? And, uh, and it works for anybody. So how exactly does this strategy work? Like what are the, what are the kind of the pieces to it? Yeah, and that's kind of the best part, Eric. It, it's just part of how our industry works uh, in, in the oil and gas and the energy world. When we go out and, and we develop assets and, and we invest dollars that we raise, really because of how the tax law is written, and there's a lot of overlap between the tax law in the, in the energy sector, which we can get into. Uh, but really what happens is before, we, we, we're required to assign a value to the fund before we get it fully developed. So in other words, the assets aren't really operating yet and we're not producing them. So there's not a way to assign a value. And so what happens, you have this short window for that first year or so that you have a very, very low value, 10, 20 cents on the dollar before it goes back up, before assets start to produce and, and cash flow kicks in and so on. Got it. So you're looking at, you know, you say you put a hundred thousand dollars in, it goes down, you know, value wise to 10 to $20,000 because the real, the, the value is in the oil that's underground, but it's not out yet. So you're just, you just have this machine. Okay. So you, that's, that's kind of where, and then it, it obviously goes up in value as oil comes out. So then take me through Lynn, ideally you have it in a traditional IRA, then you convert it when, when it's at its lowest point. And then how does it work in terms of the value then goes up in the Roth account? Yeah, well, the, the Roth account is really via all of the cash flows. These are high, very high cash flowing assets. So the simplest way to think about it is almost like a champagne bottle, where if you open it right now, in the very beginning, a lot comes out. And then by the time you put it on the table, there's very little there. 
Well, if that little window there of a minute was, say, five or six years, a lot of that is coming out that production. And so that's exactly it. You're getting all of that cash flow to that account that's now all tax free and it's liquid cash to invest in, in other assets as well. Got it. OK, so you take that hundred thousand dollars, you invest it, it and for a moment after it's all built, it's worth ten to twenty thousand dollars. You you do the conversion then, which gives you. Let's just say you're at the 40% tax rate um, and an $8,000 tax bill as opposed to a $40,000 one. So you're saving $32,000 in tax. And then the oil starts coming in and starts to produce and your account is replenished or grows um, as, as that you know, investment cash flows in now the Roth account. And all those, all that gain is tax-free? All of it. Assuming they do that conversion. Exactly. And in your conversion, your conversion bill is reduced by 80 or 90 percent just by the utilizing the strategy itself. And you can make it 100 percent tax free, which is a secondary step we can discuss at some point, uh, depending on what someone's goals are. But but that's exactly it. You're, and that's what people really love about these is it's it's not just a, a, another investment out there. Right. That is trying to do very similar things to, to other assets that they already own. They're able to take assets that they've not paid any tax on and move it and allow it to grow all completely tax free while having the government really put the tax bill because it's all written into the tax code to do this, or at least most of the tax bill. And that's what people love the most. Right. So I know at this point I'm going to talk about, you know, performance in a second, but just for the skeptics, because I know there's somebody that's going to be listening. You know, you, you, there is a tax code that you can point to. This isn't some kind of private letter ruling like there's this is legitimately in tax code. For over a hundred years, uh, it's been part of the tax code with all of the reform, the reform of 92, 86, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 17, not even uh, challenged per se. And so because of that, we actually put together a tax handbook. It's for CPAs and anybody that wants to see the exact IRC internal revenue code of where this is. It's part of the actual tax bill, which is, I think, it, or tax code, which is important. Right, because we're not in a gray area. It's not what's called a, a dirty dozen or a listed transaction that might come back and haunt me in a few years. It's literally been part of the tax law for over a hundred years. Wow. How long? And so, tell, tell me a little bit. U.S. Energy. How old is the company, and how long has U.S. Energy been doing this strategy per se? Uh, Forty-two years as a privately held, family-owned at this point G two or second generation led firm. Um, and as far as the strategy, we've been utilizing this. We came up with it uh, about just about 10 years ago or so um, for as part of our one of the, the subsets of, of one of our other funds that helps for different tax planning maneuvers clients are trying to make. So take, let's go through the, the life cycle of some, one of these things. So you, you put in this hundred thousand dollars, you know, and it, it gets reduced to, say, twenty thousand you know, in terms of the valuation, you convert it, you save that money in the tax conversion. And then take me through historical cash flow. I know we can look at different years or whatever, but just overall, you know, give me the historical anticipated returns. Um, and maybe you want to give me a high and a low so someone can think I do this. What is my experience, you know, historically looked like? Yeah. And, and I'll use, I mean, look, oil prices have come up quite a bit in, in the last month, maybe two months. But we're going to use, assuming oil is a little bit lower towards, you know, the, the 50, $55 mark. It's much higher right now. Um, the, the first several years, uh, going back to the, maybe the first five to six years, that's where you're going to get most of your cash flow. In other words, you're probably going to take 80 cents or 80% of the gas out of the tank per se in the first five or six years, because these are high cash flowing depletive assets by nature. Um, but that's really the, the whole point of these is that's what drives the what we call that IRR internal rate of return, right? Time value of money. The, if I get a dollar and the quicker I de-risk you of that dollar, not, not tax benefits, just cash flow, multiple uses of that same dollar over to reinvest over into something else. That's really what grows the, the ability to, for these to have a big, not just tax impact, but overall portfolio growth with some tax benefits attached later. So you're looking at say, what's the typical, what's the typical return per year? Is it 10%, 15, 25, 30? Like what are people typically looking at in terms of that cash flow? 
Yeah, for, for this year, and I'm just going to use the this past year of last year's fund as an example. Uh, we're probably looking in that 20, 25% range as far as initial cash flow. But again, that was where $50 oil numbers, oil's up a bit. So that, that could move that, right? Up or down, 40 and 60 would both in, impact that figure. But that's exactly it. We're looking for very strong cash flows out of the gate for these kinds of assets that we do. They, they don't continue that way forever. Right. They, they have what's called flush production and the first few years will have a, a lot of those dollars come out and they will taper off over time. But by nature and by design, they will be very strong for the first several years. So let's use that 20 percent number. So somebody puts in one hundred thousand because I want to give a like a, a real simple experience. Somebody puts in a one hundred thousand dollar investment instead of paying tax, forty thousand dollars to convert. They're paying tax on twenty thousand. So they're going to save. You know, the, at that point, it'd be eight thousand. They'll save, you know, thirty-two thousand just the first year in terms of conversion on that hundred thousand dollars. So thirty-two percent. And then we're looking at five years at about twenty percent on average, which gets you back to that hundred thousand that you had. And now your hundred thousand has turned into over five years, one hundred and thirty-two. And that's assuming you haven't invested it, no other growth. Um, but on top of that, it's now completely tax-free. If you ever take it out, you're not paying any taxes. Is that right? That's exactly it. And it, it's not just all the tax-free growth. It's the flexibility around that. Your RMDs are gone, right? You don't have to play that game anymore. You, If you want access to your capital, you can take out up to your contribution amount at any time for any reason, right? With very, very little rules to follow. No penalties, no tax, just so much flexibility for investors and getting the, the besides getting the tax man out of the picture, it gives them a lot more flexibility as well. So- how do you see people typically use this? You see people, you know, go all in. Do you see people do it in chunks? Like how do people typically look to convert? Most of the time, you're going to want to batch that out uh, systematically over time. Um, and one of the biggest reasons is that, you know, with, with our industry, like most, each year is its own business, it, its own uh, life cycle of its, of its own assets. Meaning that if you bought the S&P on this date versus this date, they're, they're, they're not going to be homogenous returns completely. And the same is true in, in the drilling fund. So they're going to want to stagger that exposure, but also to be, be able to do this systematically over time. If someone's got a million dollars in an IRA, they're not going to consider converting that entire thing, right? There's, there's a lot to do and going on. They probably want to break that up into smaller assets or do partial conversions. And then over time, over a few years, over a decade, hopefully get most, if not all those dollars in a tax-free bucket via this strategy or, or hopefully another one. Yeah. So kind of spread that tax, you know, potential tax payment out, spread the risk out, you know, diversify our favorite word, <laughs> diversify um, your investment. So perfect. Well, Fred, I thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, full disclosure, we do work together. We do have some mutual clients. It is a strategy that we have employed um, very effectively. Uh, this is not a solicitation to make any purchases or do any specific thing. For that, you should definitely consult your advisor. Uh, but I did want to throw that disclaimer in. Uh, we do know each other. We do do business together. Um, and um, yeah, obviously I'm a, I'm a fan of the strategy. So that said, Fred, thank you again for your time and uh, look forward to talking to you soon.